Hallelujah. Christ is risen. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. Glory to God in the highest and peace to his people on earth. Lord God, Heavenly King, Almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, receive our prayer. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. We thank you, Heavenly Father, that you have delivered us from the dominion of sin and death and brought us into the kingdom of your Son. And we pray that, as by his death he has recalled us to life, so by his love he may raise us to eternal joys, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. Now when the rulers and elders and scribes saw the boldness of Peter and John, and perceived that they were uneducated and ordinary men, they were amazed and recognized them as companions of Jesus. When they saw the man who had been cured standing beside them, they had nothing to say in opposition. So they ordered them to leave the council while they discussed the matter with one another. They said, what shall we do with them? For it is obvious to all who live in Jerusalem that a notable sign has been done through them. We cannot deny it. But to keep it from spreading further among the people, let us warn them to speak no more of it, to, no more to anyone in this name. So they called them and ordered them not to speak or teach at all in the name of Jesus. But Peter and John answered them, whether it is right in God's sight to listen to you rather than to God, you must judge. For we cannot keep from speaking about what we have seen and heard. After threatening them again, they let them go, finding no way to punish them because of the people. For all of them praised God for what had happened. The word of the Lord. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to St. Mark. Now after Jesus rose early on the first day of the week, he appeared first to Mary Magdalene from whom he had cast out seven demons. She went out and told those who had been with him while they were mourning and weeping. But when they heard that he was alive and had been seen by her, they would not believe it. After this, he appeared in another form to two of them, as they were walking into the country. And they went back and told the rest, but they did not believe them. Later, he appeared to the eleven themselves as they were sitting at the table. And he upbraided them for their lack of faith and stubbornness because they had not believed those who saw him after he had risen. And he said to them, Go into all the world and proclaim the good news to the whole creation. And they went out and proclaimed the good news everywhere, while the Lord worked with them and confirmed the message by the signs that accompanied it. The Gospel of the Lord. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. 
Well, it has long been the consensus of biblical scholars that this passage that I read from Mark's Gospel was a later editorial edition. If you were worshiping with us at the Great Vigil of Easter a week ago or on Easter Sunday, you heard Mark's Gospel and it ended at the 8th verse with the women running from the tomb in terror and amazement and not telling anyone. And it seems to be that for later editors of scripture that was an unsatisfactory ending to Mark's gospel. So what, uh, what, what they did was put together some of the stories or elements of them that we have heard throughout this Easter week. The story of Mary Magdalene greeting Jesus in the garden and at first not recognizing who he was and she going and telling the others. The story of the journey of the two um, to Emmaus, back home to Emmaus, and Jesus appears with them. And their hearts are burning as he reveals the scripture to them, and then he is revealed to them fully in the breaking of the bread. The story in Luke's gospel further on, when Jesus then appears to the eleven at the table and eats with them, has a piece of fish, and upbraids them for their lack of faith and their stubbornness. This suggests that while the canon of Scripture surely is closed, we are not adding any more books to the Bible these days. That was set way back in the 300s. There is still a sense of the story continuing. There is a sense of being more to the story. We get that in the Acts of the Apostles, right? Peter and John acting in Jesus' name. The story did not end with Jesus in the Gospels, but... They were charged to go out into the world, as Jesus says, and to proclaim the good news, and that's what they did. And of course, that story continues with us to this very day. We, too, are charged to be heralds of the resurrection, not to keep the good news to ourselves, but to share it, to share the grace and the goodness of the risen Christ with those around us, and to do works of power and, and might in his name. It may not be something as profound or as startling to the others as asking a lame man to bring him to his feet. But surely we work miracles day in and day out in Jesus' name, in the way that we open our hearts and our hands and our doors to those who are in need, in the ways that we spread the good news by word and example, as our baptismal covenant tells us to do. The canon of scripture is closed, but the work continues. There is a new chapter, there is a new page, there is always more work to do in advancing the aims of the kingdom of God until the time comes in God's time when all is fulfilled and all is brought back together under the name of Jesus Christ. May we work faithfully in the meantime, in that in-between time between the first coming and the second, to be faithful disciples in whatever way Jesus calls us to spread the good news. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. The prayers of the people. I ask your prayers for God's people throughout the world. For Justin, Archbishop of Canterbury. Michael, our presiding bishop. Skip, our assisting bishop. For the standing committees of the Diocese of Eastern and Western Michigan for the staff, vestry, and people of this parish, for me, your unworthy servant, for this gathering and for all ministers and people, pray for the church. I ask your prayers for peace, for goodwill among nations, and for the well-being of all people. Pray for justice and peace. I ask your prayers for the poor, the sick, the hungry, the oppressed, and those in prison. Pray for those in any need or trouble. I ask your prayers for all who seek God or a deeper knowledge of him, especially our seminarian, Joseph Kennedy. Pray that they may find and be found by him. I ask your prayers for the departed, especially those we remember now. Pray for those who have died.
I ask your own prayers and thanksgivings. Praise God for those in every generation in whom Christ has been honored. Pray that we may have grace to glorify Christ in our own day. Hasten, O Father, the coming of your kingdom, and grant that we, your servants who now live by faith, may with joy behold your Son at his coming in glorious majesty, even Jesus Christ, our only mediator and advocate. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you. Thank you. Good morning. Welcome to St. Paul's in person and online this morning. If you are worshiping God with us on this live stream, welcome. When it is time for communion, know that you are invited to receive the sacrament spiritually as we share it here materially and spiritually um, from our sacred space. Walk in love as Christ loved us and gave himself for us an offering and a sacrifice to God. Continue with Eucharistic Prayer B, page 367. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is a good, it is a right and good and joyful thing, always and everywhere, to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth. But chiefly are we bound to praise you for the glorious resurrection of your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. For he is the true Paschal Lamb who was sacrificed for us and has taken away the sin of the world. By his death he has destroyed death, and by his rising to life again he has won for us everlasting life. Therefore we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. We give thanks to you, O God, for the goodness and love which you have made known to us in creation, in the calling of Israel to be your people, in your words spoken through the prophets, and above all, in the Word made flesh, Jesus your Son. For in these last days you sent him to be incarnate from the Virgin Mary, to be the Savior and Redeemer of the world. In him you have delivered us from evil and made us worthy to stand before you. In him you have brought us out of error into truth, out of sin into righteousness, out of death into life. On the night before he died for us, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread. And when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat, 
This is my body, which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, according to his command, O Father, we remember his death, we proclaim his resurrection, we await his coming in glory. And we offer our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving to you, O Lord of all, presenting to you from your creation this bread and this wine. We pray you, gracious God, to send your Holy Spirit upon these gifts, that they may be the sacrament of the body of Christ and his blood of the new covenant. Unite us to your Son in his sacrifice, that we may be acceptable through him, being sanctified by the Holy Spirit. In the fullness of time, put all things in subjection under your Christ, and to bring us to that heavenly country where, with the Blessed Virgin Mary, St. Joseph the worker, her spouse, St. Paul the apostle, and all your saints, we may enter the everlasting heritage of your sons and daughters. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, the firstborn of all creation, the head of the church, and the author of our salvation. By him and with him and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Alleluia! Christ our Passover is sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us keep the feast of Alleluia. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us your peace. The gifts of God for the people of God. By the blood of our Lord Jesus Christ, keep you in eternal life. Amen. The body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ, keep you in eternal life. Amen.
continuing on page 366. Let us pray. Almighty and ever-living God, we thank you for feeding us with the spiritual food of the most precious body and blood of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, and for assuring us in these holy mysteries that we are living members of the body of your Son and heirs of your eternal kingdom. And now, Father, send us out to do the work you have given us to do, to love and serve you as faithful witnesses of Christ our Lord. To him, to you, and to the Holy Spirit, be honor and glory, now and forever. Amen. The blessing, love, and mercy of God, the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, rest upon you and remain with you now and always. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Alleluia, alleluia.